Miss Nora screaming and Mrs. Trotter yelling. Well, all a swearing. You never heard nothing like it. I heard it all, Mary. I just told you. Get out. Clear out. She was yelling. Only not so ladylike. Out, out, out. You know, husband of mine. No more. I heard, I heard. And take you a bitch of a sister. I'm sorry for the language, but I'm only reporting the facts. And take you a bitch of a sister with you, she yes, said. Yes, I heard. Oh, you've never heard nothing like it. Mr. Merriman. Well, what now? When Mr. Trotter shouted, how can you run the hotel without us? She said the hotel can go to you. Yes, I heard. Uh, I was wondering about that, really. I wondered about it for the rest of the night. Mr. Merriman wanted to happen to us. We'd be out in the street. Uh, we would indeed. Well? Uh, well, what? Well, what did happen then? Oh, we'd be out on the street. Streets full of people out on the street. Mr. Merriman, Now, I... if I was a clairvoyant, miss, I'd never become an waiter in the first place. Well, you won't be that for much longer. Oh, thank you. Even if I found new employment, you wouldn't. You're too old, Mr. Merriman. You're very old. There aren't many who are older. Thank you again. I'll take her a cup of tea. Oh, let her sleep. She's been up half the night, swearing. Oh, no. Carry one, which makes it. Crying out loud. Three, two, two, five. Two. God help us. Two. Morning, Mary. Merriman. Morning, Mum. You're up early, Mum. Tea in the pot, help yourself. Thank you. Good morning. Both sleep soundly, did you? Undisturbed. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Both deaf as doorposts, then, are you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Sit down. I can't talk too loud. My voice had a busy night. Now then, why you was both snoring in your beds like good Christians? Or standing listening at your doors like hotel staff usually do, whichever the case may be. There was a bit of a barney, which ended with my husband and his dear sister deciding to leave for good by the scruffs of their bleeding necks. Anyway, that was last night. It's been and gone, so we won't worry about it no more. Especially since we've got today to worry about, and tomorrow, and every day after that. Well, that's your hors d'oeuvre. Main course is a bit harder to swallow. I'm closing the hotel. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. See these? Bills, all £2,819 worth. Run up in a few short months by my husband, former husband as of now, and his cow of a sister. You wouldn't think it was humanly possible, would you? No, ma'am. Well, it seems it is. So if you accidentally heard some right language last night, you know the reason why. And all I've got to do now is pay it off every penny. But, ma'am, if you're closing the hotel, how can you pay? I mean, what can you... Work. Just work, I suppose. Damn hard. Harder than I've ever worked in my life. With tea and toast for dinner and my next new dress the day, it's all paid off. Oh, but, ma'am, you've got friends, people of means. Won't any of them offer to assist in your... Oh, uh, yes, I uh, should think they most certainly will. Oh, thank God, ma'am. And when they do, I just say no. I turn them down flat, don't I? Hey, will you, ma'am? Yeah, there's not much point in swapping one debt for another. Oh, but I'm talking about friends, ma'am. That's right, so am I. Well, it just can't be done, Mrs Trotter. Nearly £3,000. I never knew there were that many pounds, even in England. £24 a year I get per annum. To take me all my life longer. I'd be older than Mr Merriman. I still don't know how we're going to do it. What we'll have to do, we? eh? Us? Well, me and you, ma'am, anyway. I didn't think of you staying on, Mary, either of you. Well, I've got nowhere else to go. Anyway, I'd like to help if I could. Thank you, Mary. So you shall, then. So you shall. Good. I still don't know what to win. Help you do what? Well, now, you've seen the ladies promenading up and down in the street outside. Every night, all night. Street walkers? Tarts, yeah. Well, they sell the only commodity they've got to sell, don't they? Right, we'll do the same. Oh, Mama, I, I don't think I could. I mean, well, I've always been a... We'll sell our only commodity. That's what I'm saying, Mama. I don't think I could. Mary, who's the best cook in London? Cook? Cook. You are, ma'am. We'll cook all the hours God sends us. For anyone who wants us to, we'll pay the right price. If they want a French banquet, they get a French banquet. If they want fish and chips, they get fish and chips. And we'll earn the money. All £2,819. <laughs> even 2820 And all without so much as even lifting your petticoats, Mary. Do you still want to stay? 
I suppose so. If you think we can, yes, please, ma'am. Good girl. You too, Merriman. Uh, well, ma'am, there are one or two difficulties, as you know. I'm a oh, man of a stop being so awkward, you old misery. Of course you'll stay. Who else is balmy enough to have you? You said it. It's my privilege on the gaffer. Come on. Have mercy on the merchandise, Mrs. Trotter. That done you no harm, has it? Now, what harm's that poor old chicken done you? There's no chance to, Ben Smart. Won't be me eating it. Yeah, tell me, Mrs. Trotter, why don't you never come after we've opened, like everyone else does? No one comes every day at this time, Harold, in the bleeding dawn. I do. Oh, granted, you do, yeah. Yeah, come to think of it, I haven't seen you for a few days. I thought perhaps you'd been coming before I'd even got here. Tell me, Ben, if they're not fresh now, what they're going to be like when you do open? Not fresh? Yeah. Put your cap over your ears, Jamie. I think he's going to start blinding. They're the freshest in the market, bar none. Oh, yeah. Here, you like a bargain, don't you? I'm listening. How about a quick kiss and a cuddle round the back of the next door? Uh, and while we're round here, I'll nick you the finest cauliflower this side of the Bermondsey flower shop. Nobody kisses and cuddles this time of the morning, at least not for a bleeding cauliflower. <laughs> How much of the quail? A tanner. Cheapest in the market. Tanner for two, eh? For one? Here, tomorrow morning, fetch a place. The cheapest and the freshest. That bird, an hour ago, was looking forward to a long and happy life. Poor oh, son. Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> For a minute, I thought we're still alive and kicking. I'll give you Fultons. Fultons? Fultons. Mrs. Trotter, I've got a wife. A God knows how many kids I lose count. Fultons, Ben. Get them ready, Jamie. She's got that look on her face again. Thank you, Ben. You're a gentleman. I'll take half a dozen. Oh. And the best cauliflower from the Bermondsey flower show from the back of the next stall, and I'll stop here while you get it. Have you gone balmy, Mrs. Trotter? Or do you think I have? I mean, which is it? All I said... Now, I know damn well what you said. You want me to buy from you when you're already up to the eyebrows in debt with what you brought from me. I oh, know I am. That's what I'm suggesting in it. In fact, I'll tell you how much you're in debt, just to prove I'm not balmy. I can tell you how much. Twenty-eight pounds, seven shillings. One moment, young woman. Have patience for one moment. Twenty-eight pounds, seven shillings. Right, thank you. Now, in the absence of an apology, perhaps you'd be so good as to give me an earring. Mrs. Dotter. All I'm suggesting is a way to pay it off, since I can't pay it off with money. Oh, I see. No money changes hands. What I sell you, you just knock off me bill. Oh, you do get excited, don't you? No wonder you got gout. Now, how much do you charge your customers for quail? Half a crown, cooked. Mm, make a nice profit there, don't you? We do have overheads. How does this sound to you? Two bob cooked, shilling raw. What, two shillings? Cooked by you? So if you charge two and a penny, you're still making a profit, aren't you? All you have to do is hand them over the counter. And you'll be doing the cooking? With me own clever hands. Taste better than yours, won't they? How many can I have? 
Half a dozen, you can have them by tea time. You'll charge two and bloody seven, won't you? Young man, you don't understand. We've none left. What do you mean, you've none left? It's just that we've none left, Mrs Carradine, I'm sorry. What good is sorry, young man? How many miles do I feed with sorry? I demand to see the manager. I demand to see the manager. It's beginning to sound like a musical chorus. Trouble? Every day. Uh, Mr May. It's Lord Ealing's housekeeper. Oh, well, she wasn't it. She'd be somebody else's, wouldn't she? She's going potty because we sold out of veal and ham pies. I am a regular customer, tell him. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Carradine, and most highly valued. I'm so very sorry, madam, but we're always sold out by this time. We just can't make enough it's to please all our customers. every day the in. same. Well, yes, madam, that's what I'm saying. Well, it's not good enough, is it? Well, perhaps if you could call earlier. Perhaps if you could save me some. Oh, I'm sorry, madam, but that's what everyone asked me to do. Well, there's nothing more to be said then, is there? I apologise. Will that be all then, madam? It'll have to be, won't it? Excuse me. That's uh, the turkey, a ham, the sausage and the figs. That'll be 34 and 6 plus 2 cartons all together. We'll deliver within the hour. So half a dozen quail, two bob each is 12 shillings off my bill, right? Uh, yes, yes, agreed. Not the most satisfied of customers, eh? Oh, I'm in the wrong trade for that. I'd have to be a magician. Why don't you be, then? Eh? You could have veal and empires coming out of Mrs Carradine's act and a bloomer's too by way of an encore. Well, what are you talking about? Pies. Veal and empires, pork pies, what you like. You're not selling those as well? As many as you like. I buy the veal, the pork, the ham, I bake the pies. All you do, Mr Mather, smile at your customers, knock them off me bill. Well, I'd need hundreds. Hundreds you shall have. Thousands be better. How much a pie? What weight? Oh, a pound, say, feel enough. Eleven pence halfpenny. Nine pence. I can't go a farthing under eleven pence halfpenny. And I can't go a farthing over nine pence. Good day then, Mr May. The, the quail will be ready as arranged if uh, Mr Ellis has time to collect them. Ten pence farthing. Done. Ten pence halfpenny. You said done. Mr Mather, we're not just talking about ordinary pies, we're talking about Louisa Trotter's pies. Mm. Ten pence halfpenny then. Oh, Mr Mather, you do strike hard bargain. That's what I said, Mr. Merriman. What in a sitting room? That's right. Then a small wardrobe and a tall boy, likewise. All our bedroom stuff. Into the sitting room? Into the sitting room. Can you give me one sane reason why? Yes, because she said so. I should leave you to hunt the rest, because I should be in the kitchen. I'm only a woman, you're a man. Oh, I'm an old man, Mary. Very old man. I should be lying on a bed at this time of day, not carding it up and downstairs. Well, you did have a sit down halfway to get your breath back. Yes, well, I'm a waiter, not a furniture remover. Ah, uh, that must have been in a previous life, Mr. Merriman, two months ago. <laughs> Bedroom furniture has been removed to your sitting room as instructed. Yeah, what of it? Which means your bedroom has no furniture in it, and your sitting room has your sitting room furniture and your bedroom furniture in it. Merriman, if I sleep downstairs, I can spend more time in the kitchen, and the more time I spend in the kitchen, the sooner I can get back to sleeping in my bedroom. Sunk in yet, has it? Hmm? Sunk in? No, well, it wouldn't, would it? You're not a woman. Are you taking a little holiday, Mary? Oh, sorry, Mary. Hey, Mum. Hey, excuse me, Mum. Yeah, what is it? It's, uh, it's your parents, Mum. Mr and Mrs Leighton. What, here? Uh, in the hall. Oh, blimey. Uh, Mary, make a pot of tea, love. Uh, tea and biscuits. Dump them in my room, there's a dear. Mum. Such a good husband, Louisa. Who was? He adores you. 
Yeah, it makes it all the worse, doesn't it? He should never have come snivelling to you. I think it was his sister's idea. Yeah, everything's his sister's idea. Did she tell him to tell you what a bitch I am? He just seemed to apologise, mostly. Louisa, you can't pay it all off. You can't do the impossible. Not on your own. I'm not on me own, am I? I don't count servants, Well, do I you? do. Hasn't, um... Hasn't he offered to help? He? You know, your, um, old friend. Who's that, then? The king girl. If Edward knew the uh, trouble... His Majesty. Oh, His Majesty. Surely if he knew the trouble you was in... Yeah, he's offered. He's written to me. Well, his equerry has two or three times. Oh, they are. Then everything's all right. I told you, Violet. Mum, Dad, I want no one's help. If you hadn't helped me in the first place, I wouldn't need help now. Anyway, needing's different from wanting. I'll be beholden to no one. Louisa. And don't you start putting your hand in your pocket, Dad. You can't afford it. And I wouldn't take it from you anyhow. No. Yeah, well, we, um... We thought you'd want to be independent. You always were. Yeah, but we still wanted to come and see you, you know, it being Christmas Eve and everything. So, well, because... Well, because we were worried about you. Oh, yes, it. We was worried how you was keeping, since we hadn't heard from you for so long. You know, ages and ages. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Mum. I've been up to me eyes in it. I will write, you know, like I used to from ages time to time. and ages and ages. Mum's not a dicky bird. We used to look forward to your little letters coming so regular. Oh, I mean, apart from the money inside, all that apart, oh, heavens above, no. I mean, the letters themselves and all your news and whether you was having a nice time. Mmm, what lovely sort, Bob. Did you make it yourself? Yeah, of course. Oh, of course you did. Perfect. Do you want another cup of tea, Ted? Oh, yeah. Louisa, I may be wrong, but um, well, if the King's offered you up, I mean, wasn't it really, you know, only common courtesy? Yeah. Sort of... Oh. I've got a little Christmas box for you, by the way. Plus? Yeah, it's nothing much, just a few quid. Oh, no, we couldn't take money from you, Louisa. Not when you're working so hard All to... the hours God sends. <laughs> that wouldn't be right on our part. No, not when you're trying to save. I've been saving it for you. Well... Thank you, Louisa. You're a... You're a good girl. Thoughtful. Always were. Excuse me, ma'am. The whatever it is has been simmering now for a good 15 minutes and... Oh, yes, thanks, Mary. Right away. Well, we won't impose on you if you're busy, Louisa. But we just had to come, you know, have a nice chat. Louisa? How long have you had your bed in here, then? Oh, a few months. Good idea. Make sure you get plenty of rest. Dinner for eight, Lieutenant General Denison's Knightsbridge. Melon glass, eh? Yeah. Consomme de volaille. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. Salmon grill, eh? Grilled salmon? Yes. Yeah, tartar sauce? Yes, of course. Cotelette de mouton. Uh, yeah. Souffle de caillou, eh? Right? Uh, Ma'am, uh, three more commissions. <laughs> well, uh, inquiries, that is. Uh, the Duchess of Lord, January the second, luncheon for twelve. Lady Blackwater also Jane the second, supper for four. Mrs. Lionel Watson, Jane the fifth, uh, dinner for eight. Except uh, which? All of them, all three. Oh, I don't think you can, Mum. You see, already on Jane the fifth, you're doing your lunch Except for twelve. Except them, we'll manage. <laughs> it's all right, Nerman. Go and rest, Mary. Oh, Mum, there's the hands to scour the fish, to clean the vegetables, to do and there's nothing even starting Go yet. on, go and rest. You can have 40 wings, well, 39. You don't rest. You never rest. Oh, don't be so balmy. It's me I'm working for. I know what I'll get out of it when it's all over. What you get out of it, eh? Well, I'll have been a help. Without me, you mightn't have done it so quick. No, I wouldn't have done it at all. If I ever do, that is. I'm all right now. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Well, you could have had ten minutes. Oh, I could have done the fish in that time. Mary, ordinary people call it fish. We're not ordinary. Fish have names where we come from. Salmon, then. Salmon. Salmon. Oi, Mary. Merry 
Christmas. Merry Christmas, ma'am. Very, very poorly, Doctor. Well, I don't think Crucian Salts would ever want her as an advertisement for glowing health. Working herself to exhaustion, barely eating, barely sleeping. How long has the suicidal business been going on? All winter. Will she soon be better, sir, do you think? Only with plenty of rest and regular meals and no work. The same applies to you by the look of you. Oh, I get more rest than she does. She has the mental worry as well, you see. My Auntie Gwynne says that that aggravates the sickness even worse. Oh, does she? Oh, yes, sir, in her opinion. I'm most grateful. Now, it's up to you, young lady, to see that Mrs. Trotter eats properly and rests properly from now on. Those are strict orders. And it's your responsibility to see that she obeys. Yes, sir. I'll try, sir. A kitchen maid is only allowed to give orders to a scullery maid as a rule. And we haven't got a scullery maid. She shouldn't get up at all tomorrow. Not for two days at least. Very good, sir. Hey, oh. All this palaver, I forgot to put the brandy in the chicken liver patties. Bring me the livers a cheap bottle, I'll mix them in here. No, ma'am. What the hell do you mean, no? I mean no. Ducky, doctors are only doctors. They're not emperors of India and defenders of the bleeding faith. The answer's still no. I'd like that to be understood, please. Thank you. Well done, nurse. Mr. Merriman? Mr. Merriman? Oh, I'm reading the paper. When I read, I read. I don't talk. What is it that I'm in sometimes? When I don't know what to do and you say I'm in something, I'm in a certain word. Quandary. Oh, that's it, quandary. Well, I'm in one again. Good. Before she got took poorly, she'd be up and about by now. But on the other hand, the doctor said she'd stay in bed all day. So the quandary is, should I take her a morning pot or tea or not? That's the quandary in question. Mary, I'm trying to read the newspaper. Yesterday's newspaper. Time we have to get up in this establishment. There's no such thing as today's. Mr. Merriman, if she rests and convalesces and does less cooking and earns less money, well, it's all over, innit? We will be on the street. One of the attributes of old age is wisdom. In my wisdom, I said you were both mad at the time, and I was right. You said no such thing. Well, I thought it. I'll take her the tea. And if she's sleeping, I'll bring it back. you, don't I? I don't think so. So if you wouldn't mind... It's Louisa. Is it? Well, I don't know you from Adam and Eve nor the serpent. 
So shift your carcass and let me get on. Louisa, stop it. You know who I am, all right. I was wondering if there's any chance of a lift to Piccadilly Circus. Please, Mr Tyrrell, get on your way and let me get on my night. Mr Tyrrell? It was Mr Charlie the first time we met. As I remember, you were rogue, vagabond, rake and seducer of innocent young kitchen maids. Attempted seducer? Failed seducer? It was the second time we met before Mr Charlie. How are you, Louisa? I'm well. Now, can I get on with me business? And your husband? He ain't me husband no more. I see. See what? What is there to see? Louisa, what on earth are you doing at this time of the morning, pushing a barrow? In the first place, I'm minding my own business. In the second place, whatever I'm doing is a damn sight more respectable than you. I stood here, this time of the morning, St James's in your, in your evening suit. I don't think you are well, actually. You don't look well. Where can I call on you? Why, do you want to or something? Well, of course I do. Bainting Hotel, if you like. I ain't no guess anymore. I ain't no tell anymore. You can do what you like. You won't object? Up to you, innit? Louisa, we are old friends. Good morning. Are you sure you're all right? I told you I was, didn't I? Louisa, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. We'd better get you home. No, no, Mr. Charlie, I'll be all right. to bring you without spending no money. I was in a quandary. I brought Quail in Aspic. Mr Tyrrell said it was horrible. Collapsing in the street. He thought she was dying. If you are, Mum, I don't think you must expect us to feel sorry. You were supposed to stay in bed. We did our best. Mr. Tyrrell. Pardon, Mum? When did you say Mr. Tyrrell? He's called at the hotel every day since it happened to tell us how you were. They wouldn't let me come till today. Oh, Mr. Merriman's notified Viscount Stanley and the Honourable George Campbell that they love to whistle for their dinners. Everything's been cancelled. They wished you better. I heard Mr. Merriman praying last night. That's something I've never heard him do before. Perhaps it was for all seed backed. Don't cry, Mary. I'm not. Now you will 
try and get well this time, won't you, Mum? The kitchen can wait. Kitchen can blow itself up for all I care. I'm gonna pack the old thing in. Twirl with my debts. All I don't want to do now is die in peace. If you don't pay your debts, Mum, they'll throw you out the hotel. You'll have nowhere to live. Well, that won't matter much if I'm dead, will it? They tried. That's supposed to be the most important thing. It's supposed to be. And we failed. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What's the matter? Some people don't even get bread. Most people saw a lot of them like that when I was a girl. I thought if I didn't see them no more, they wouldn't be there. But I have. And they are. I don't know what to say to cheer you up, girl. Nothing, I suppose. There is nothing. Hello, Mary. I think she's sleeping, sir. How is she, say? She's never been like this, ever. This must be a nightmare. Five days. It happened five days ago. Oh, sleep me life away here. So, who'd you get them for? First pretty woman I bumped into. No. Oh, I know that. Mary told me. Oh, she did, did she? She repeated like a catechism. You seem to tell each other a lot, you and Mary. It's always about me, I know. There's nothing better to do. What you been thinking about, then? I'm sorry this is how it's ended. But I think you were right to do what you did. Making yourself responsible for the debts. You're about the only one that does. Of course. I'm the only one that understands you. And me. I understand me. I was a bloody fool. How's Lord Isomir these days? Father? Still taking long athletic walks around his Yorkshire estates. Keeping as fit as he can because he thinks I'm waiting for him to die. Oh, yeah? He'll live forever. No. No, I enjoy myself, occupy myself, enjoying the pleasures of London. They don't keep me fit. They keep me happy. Fairly happy. Not changed, have you? Not in one single respect. It isn't altogether true that I enjoy the pleasures of London. Not as much as I should and could. I seem to wander from the house of one friend to the house of the next. In circles. Like a fairground Johnny. Such a nice posh ass he was gonna have and all. Carriages, servants, big planes, you've done nothing, have you? Which isn't to say I'm not going to. Same old Charlie. Louisa, how much would the lease cost on your hotel? Why? How much? Fifteen hundred pounds. I'll buy it. What for? It'll give me what I need, won't it? Premises. A home in London. A suite of rooms furnished to my own taste that I can regard as home, where I can invite my friends for a change. No, I don't want charity. It isn't, for God's sake. Well, if you don't want to sell, all right, I'll buy another as long as I've got somewhere. You do that, then. The answer's no. Please yourself. I always do. <sighs> Evidently. 
Do you mind pushing off now? Visiting time's over. You'll see. You're stupid as well as stubborn, aren't you? I never knew that. Look, I want no one's help. It's been help that got me where I am now. At death's door. Death's door? You'll live as long as my father. It's to help me, woman. Admittedly, I'd be an investment for you, but so would you be, for me. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is a damn sight more to the point. Well. Would I be expected to cook for you, for you and your friends? If you were agreeable, that's precisely what I'd expect. Well, how, Charlie Lani, the only one I'm going to be cooking for is St. Peter. Oh, when you're recovered. When it's convenient, say, within a month. A month? Yes. I'm not a bleeding pit pony. Oh, but you'd have no debts left, would you, blockhead? It'd be less work for a downside, more money. Well, how many months or years do you think it would take slaving away in that black hole of a kitchen to earn 1,500 quid? Think, woman. Oh, it's a rum sort of hotel, isn't it? One guest, one suite of rooms and no furniture. No, things impossible. Is that the question? Eighteen guineas, then. Do I hear nineteen? For this superb hooded porter's chair, do I hear nineteen guineas, gentlemen? Sir Charlie. Up to you. Oh, it's ever so expensive, isn't it? I don't remember when I last spent time. Oh, come along, gentlemen. Do I hear 19 guineas? Oh, it is nice, though. I don't know. What do you think? 19's too dear, isn't it? Yes, it is. Going for 18 guineas, then? Going! But not if you really want it. 19! Thank you, madam. Uh, any advance on 19? That's me last bit. I'm not going no higher. 20! 21! 21! Do I hear 22? Oh, I bloody well hope not. Going for 21, then? Going! Going and go. Charlie! Oh. Yeah, let's go now. Look, I've got me, me chairs, me dining table, me old table, me pictures, me beautiful hooded chair. All I need now is a couple more hotels to put me in. And now we come to lot 24, oh. gentlemen. Wait a second. A lady and gentleman. Grand piano, handiwork of Mrs. Steinway. Beautiful to look upon, and I have no doubt equally beautiful to listen to. Yes. I don't want a piano. Not for you, for me. Now, who's going to start the bidding at, uh, shall we say, 25 guineas? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, 26. 26. You don't even play. Well, I can learn, can't I? Morning, George. Well, what do you think? Looks like a tiled's bedroom. Oh. Well, I wouldn't say that. Well, you should know. How many quail are you course moving? Bloody hundreds. God knows how many pork pies. If you're delivering furniture, come in. If you're not, why aren't you? Make yourself at home. Thank you. What a mess. What do I say on the piano? Not this sound much better than it did when I come in. I thought I was doing rather well. Louisa, did we buy any wardrobes at all? Yeah, they're coming tomorrow. Typical. My man's bringing all my clothes this afternoon. Louisa, why is it that my rooms are still in this mess when you've done up the entire hotel? I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I think I get carried away. I've noticed that before. No going back now? No, I suppose not. Happy? Worried. Worried, but happy. Worried, but worried. I think I must be balmy. When I decided to open a suite of rooms for you, well, I think I was just delirious. 
Then Pete and me, what are we going to do next? Open all the rooms, open the whole bleeding hotel. Now that's not delirious, that's plain balmy. Oh, Charlie, I'm right back at the beginning again. All the slaving and sweating to pay off me debts. What am I doing? I'm landing myself in more of them. I'll have a sight more. But you're getting an entire new hotel woman. Louisa, how many times do I have to explain? Yeah, but what if it fails? It won't. It might. No. It's what you wanted. You won't let it fail. It's all you've ever wanted from life, isn't it? Yeah, you know it is. Absolutely all. And I tell nothing more. Well, and it's guests. Especially if they're anything like me first. And they appreciate me cooking. Yeah, that's all. And no husbands. Most certainly no husbands. No lovers. Most certainly no husbands. Anyway, I'm going to be slaving away in the kitchen for your bleeding lovers. What about you, Charlie? Apart from the regiment of women I'm going to be cooking for. What do you want out of life, eh? You could have had the pick of society. You know that, don't you? Yeah, you forget I already have had. Well, pick a society, pick me. Well, is he a pianist? Is that what you want? Be a great pianist? I'll surprise you. I'll learn to play one day. It's always one day, eh, Charlie? Ah, there's plenty of time. There's never plenty of time, love. Not for things that matter. For example, tell you what I've got for your dinner. Melon, followed by turbot, followed by roast beef, followed by cherries in brandy. Tempting. Well, I only hope she knows what she's doing. I said I only hope she knows what she's doing. Mr. Merryman! You only hope she knows what she's doing? Yes. So do I. Who? Is this Tom Jones? I agree. She never has yet. He's too young to start now. He's not what he seems, though, Mr. Merriman. Good. Who? Mr. Tyrrell. He's no gentleman, really. Oh? I know what he gets up to. I was the tween he made at Lord Henry. Lord Henry's his uncle. And uh, what does he get up to? Uh, what doesn't he get up to? Uh, Mary, when I want lessons in Welsh, I'll ask for them. Speak English. Why is Mr. Tyrrell no gentleman? No female servant was safe. For every poor girl who made his bed every day, there was always one helping him to unmake it every night, and every night a different one. But then he is a gentleman. Huh? That's what gentlemen are like. All gentlemen. That's what makes them gentlemen, understand? No. Well, have patience. You will. Star. Mr. Star. Two hours. Oh, yes. Yes, I see. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, dog's with you, is he? Day and night. Yes. Come in. Uh, there's a uh, Mr. Starr to see you, ma'am. Says he has an appointment. He appears to have what I'm going to describe as a dog with him, ma'am. His name is Fred, ma'am. What? We're here, re your advertisement in the Times, madam. Re application for the position, re hall porter. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, th thank you, Merriman. Come in, Mr. Starr. Uh, was it Starr? It was, ma'am, and is, with two R's. Do sit down, both of you. Thank you, Mrs. Trotter. Now stay, boy. Stay. And no arguments. Well, now, uh, where shall I start? Not that sure where to start. I'm not all that used to interviewing. That's perfectly all right, madam. We are. Well, I think we might begin by establishing what exactly is the remuneration you have in mind. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, 30 quid a year, all fan, plus tips, of course. Of course. Which, in the case of all Porter, are extremely... Indeed they are. Correct, Fred? Correct. Proceed, ma'am. Well, now, uh, as you'll understand, it's a highly responsible position, all Porter, and... Uh... And you would wish for a man of experience? Experience. Yes, what I'm looking for is a man of experience. Good. Look no further, ma'am. A man with excellent references, I imagine? Yes. Have you references, Mr. Starr? The very best, Mrs. Trotter. I am my references. Yes, Fred? Yes, indeed. Oh. Uh, the experience you talk about, where have you worked previous? Here and there, madam. I see. Uh, doing what? This and that. Oh. 
You seem a military sort of gentleman. Did you fight in the Boer War? Very possibly. Oh. Well, I'd say you did. And won. Well, now. Well, now, Fred and I would be grateful if you'd be as frank with us, madam, as we have with you. And what we'd like to know are, one, the number of guests to whom we are to be of service. Two, whether Fred, of course, would be welcome. No Fred, no yours truly. Correct, Fred? Correct. Three, the number and character of the remainder of the staff. Four, what arrangements could be made satisfactory to... Come on, Katie. This is nice and warm in here. Uh, can I help you, ladies? <gasps> I doubt it, pal. It wouldn't cost that much to try. Eh? Well, this is the new hotel, isn't it? Uh, well, yes, I will be in a day or two. Oh, not yet, then. Well, uh, we're not open yet. Oh, we was hoping for a bit of trade, if you'd any gentlemen staying. Oh, psh, go on, both of you, skedaddle. Hey, who the hell are you talking to, little bloody skivvy? You, so get out and shut the door behind you. This is going to be a hotel, isn't it? Not you, a kind. Oh, they're all our kind, dear. How long have you been down from the mountain, then? Go on, get out, Mr. Merriman, hey. let me get them out. Oh, no, no, here, for God's sake. It was two ladies, sort of, ma'am. They wanted to know if they could... Uh, a couple of tarts, ma'am. Oh, they had the affrontery to want to... Anyway, I, I checked them out, ma'am. No bones broken, then. No, ma'am. That's all right, then. Mary, Mr. Starr. Mr. Starr is going to join us as old porter. And Fred. And Fred. Uh, Mr. Merriman, you already know. Yes. Uh, yes. Hello? Please to make your acquaintance, miss. So we'll... Uh, See you as arranged then, Stell. At your service, ma'am. And a pleasure to be so. Go on, Fred. Uh, he's, uh, he's uh, what you had in mind, would you say, ma'am? I don't know. I've done nothing about him. He interviewed me. But, but you engaged him. Yeah, I think that's why I engaged him. I like mysteries. Oh, and Mary, one little thing. Yes, ma'am? When you chuck ladies out in future, do it gently, eh? Nicely. What ladies, ma'am? That'll do, Mary. For streetwalkers, ma'am. Which is another word for working girls, Mary. Same as us. I've told you before, you mustn't be a snob. Do you like my new cap? Oh, I wish we wasn't opening today. I wish it was opening next week. Oh, you look beautiful. Tomorrow, even. This afternoon. Oh, well, Mary, what do you think? That you look very beautiful. Oh, I don't mean that. I know you don't. Thanks. In fact, thanks for everything. Ready? Ready. Good luck, ma'am. Thanks. You deserve it. Good morning. Staff of the Benting Hotel and Fred. Good, Good morning, morning ma'am. Well, if you was expecting a grand speech, I'm afraid that was it. Except perhaps to say, God save the king. God, God save, save the king. king. And God save the Bentink while he's about it. Righto, start, open the door. We'll do that a pair of trumpets. Oh. oh, God, what was that? Oh, looks suspiciously like a cherry bum of champagne to me. Cherry bum of champagne? Yes, a cherry bum. Louisa, where are the glasses? I'd be delighted for you all oh, to join. Oh, thank you, Mr. Terrell. Come on, everyone, my room. Surely not the staff, ma'am. Especially the staff, star. Champagne, 10.30 in the morning. I'm ashamed of myself, I'm happy to say. Come on. It's cold out there, because... Hey, you, come here. Yes, sir? Never mind, yes, sir. I've got a cab full of luggage out there. Bring it in here and damn sharpish. Yes, sir. At once, sir. Just a moment, star. For what purpose, may I ask? For what purpose? This hotel, ain't it? Hmm. Well, I want a room. The biggest and the best you've got, and a damn sight less evidence from you for a start. I don't think I caught your name, did I? Oh, didn't you know? No, I didn't. Oh. Well, then I suggest Sir will do from you, all right? Is Sir your title? It is the custom, madam, for customers. Atkinson, Mr. Josiah Atkinson, proprietor of the Atkinson Coal Mining Company, not again, sir, and I want a room befitting that position. You mean in the coal cellar? You what? I don't think we have any rooms available. Good morning. Madam, we've plenty of rooms available. Almost all of them. Yeah, but not for the lights of jumped-up little snotty noses like Mr Atkinson. If you care to try an ordinary hotel, I'm sure they'd be happy to oblige. Scott, uh, Josh, sling your hook. Well, I don't understand. That'll be all, star, if you catch me meaning. Certainly, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good job. Carry on. Oops. 
Mind the step. Lovely. Right, come on, everyone, while the bubbly's still fizzing before he drinks the lot. He was a wealthy man, Mum. I don't think so, dear. All he had was money. Mum, you're always telling me I mustn't be a snob. And so you mustn't, Mary, and I should know I am one. Oh, I don't understand. Understand what, Barmy? What you doing? Doing? I'm starting as I mean to go on. Right, where's my glasses? <laughs> Mastersons want to come and stay, do they? That's jolly good, Louisa. They're people worth having. Yeah, there's more and more inquiries every day, but nobody's actually come yet. It'll take time. I suppose I should advertise. And not if you want to be particular about your guests. Personal recommendation, that's how it's done. Now, I'm doing my best. Every party I go to, I've become a positive bore about the virtues of the Benting Hotel. Sure. And, of course, everybody knows about your cooking. Well, I don't want to go slaving away in that bloody kitchen the rest of my life. Cooking hundreds of pies for Mavis, dinners for all and sundry. I bet you by the summer the place will be overflowing. Anyway, I thought you liked cooking. Oh, there's cooking and cooking. Done the shopping for your little dinner party, by the way. My first at the Bentink. Quite an occasion. How's that for a menu? Oh, looks delicious. Pâté de foie gras, quail pudding. Oh, by the way, no garlic in anything. No garlic. She's the most awfully topping girl. I think you'll approve. Oh, that'll make a change. Yeah, I met her at that Hunt Ball in Hampshire last week. Same party. Dances divinely. Married? I should hope so. Yes, husband's in the army, convenient on a mission to Egypt. Well, she said she was going up to London to do some shopping this week, so I asked her to dine. Keen as mustard. Yes, she said, just like that. You're irresistible. That's your trouble. Uh, she likes roses. Does she now? Well, she can go on liking them. She's getting none here. I've got some nice spring flowers, nice and fresh and virginal. Well, I shall go out and buy myself a new waistcoat to impress her. <sighs> Looks like we got a visitor wanting to stay, Mum. Have we now? Here, take the tray away, Mary. <laughs> Our shrimp whiskers, then. Gent by the name of Smith Barton, Major Smith Barton, DSO. How do you know all that? There was a letter sent here waiting for him to collect. Don't like that. It sounds like a trick. Coronet on the envelope. He seems a gentleman. Fred gave him a wag. All right, I'll see him. Very good. Hey, here. Where's your respect? Very good, madam. If you care to step into Mrs. Trotter's room, sir, straight across the hall. Thank you. You might have to carry that lot out again. It's an hotel, isn't it? Private hotel. Yeah, the old bloke can take a room corny, same as any other hotel. That depends. That all depends. Just back from the east. Been out there a longish trial. Looking for somewhere to put up, don't you know? I see, Major. I've been, been down in Suffolk, shooting with my cousin, Lord Dedham. Said he'd heard the old Benting had opened again, run by a damn fine woman who really knew how to cook. Oh, that's nice. Asked me to stay on, you know, down there. But the Dedhams live in a drafted barrack of a house and, and, and my blood's a bit thin after all those years in the sun, so I upped sticks and made for London. Was you thinking of a set of rooms, Major? Oh, Lord, no. I'm an old campaigner, you know. I don't like a lot of fuss. If you've got a boot cupboard somewhere, it'll do me. Oh, well, I think we can do something a bit better than that, if you'll follow me. Thank you. Put the Major in number 11, Star. Madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I wonder if I might have a loan of your sporting life. Well, certainly, sir. You're sure you've finished with it? He's better without it. Oh, very kind. Nicest part of London, this, I always think. Like an armchair. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wonder if I might have luncheon in my room. Cold pheasant and a bottle of claret, something like that. Certainly, Major. Did you hear that, Merriman? Oh, I did, Reverend. I did. Oh, very kind. Charming servants you have, ma'am. That old fossil stiff as a post. Lissy chooses not to be. Mm. I only keep him on out of kindness. Of course, in India, one gets used to half trained boys. <laughs> Seems to have got his feet under the table nice and quick. Uh, he's the thought. We never get rid of him now he's here. 
And he'd want every meal carried up to his room. Breakfast, lunch and tea, dinner. I've seen them before. Say, there was a day not so long ago when no gentleman would have had his luncheon in his hotel. What do you think he's clubbed for? Oh, I don't know what some people are coming to these days. I may be old, but I still know what's what. But I reckon Major Whiskers is a bit of a sporting old gentleman. What do you say, Fred? Now, when Mr Till and his guests have finished the soup, you put the light under the sole. Not before. And let me know when they're ready for me quail pudding, I'll bring it up myself. Did you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I heard you, ma'am. Don't light them candles till well, Mr Tyrrell rings. No, ma'am. And get done quick when it's over. Well, will you hanging about like a drunk at a wedding. Yes, ma'am. Fell three out. Oh, uh, probably brought down. No, or interfered with. Not the horse's fault, sure of that. Real good and... Oh, well, you can't always win. What's your fancy for tomorrow, Major? Sultan's kiss and the two o'clock at Sandown. Absolute snip. Can't go wrong. I had it in confidence uh, from a fellow... Is this the Bentink Hotel? Uh, yes, madam. Mr Tyrrell's party, Mrs Travers. Uh, Mr Tyrrell's guest. Will you follow me, madam? Nice looking, Sir Leonard. A bit of blood there. Highly strung, I shouldn't wonder. Be all right with the right jockey, aren't they, Major? <laughs> Mrs. Travers is here, sir. Oh, please show her in. My dear Belinda, how nice to see you again. Good evening, Charles. Uh, do please sit down. Cold out. Raw. Yes, beastly. Horrible, you know. How about something to warm you up? A glass of Madeira? No, thank you. Oh, well, perhaps a glass of champagne. Well... Oh, don't open a bottle especially for me. Oh, heavens no, it's mother's milk to me. <laughs> what an unusual place this is. Not a bit like an hotel. No, oh, well, that's the idea. You see, Mrs Trotter, who runs the place, thought it would be a good idea to make it more like a sort of country house, don't you know? How quaint. What fun it was last weekend, wasn't it? Mm. Yes, it was. Really quite deavy. <laughs> Tubby Vernon dressing up as a footman and spilling the soup all over Admiral Squeezy Dick's shirt was really quite a lark, wasn't it? Yes, it was quite a lark, wasn't it? <laughs> I bet the old devil played footy-footy with you under the table. Yes, he did, actually. It was most awfully embarrassing. Oh, I don't blame him. What did you do? Oh, my mother taught me always to have a fork ready. To repel invaders, eh? <laughs> I must be careful. I say, that's the most awfully nice dress you're wearing. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. It was part of my trousseau. My sister said she thought it was rather risque. Uh, I'm staying with her in Paddington. Oh, Paddington. So handy for the park. Yes. I always seem to be cuckooing with some friend or relation or other when Basil's away. Well, I'm sure you're very welcome in every nest. Uh, that's what's so nice about this place. One is so completely undisturbed. Private, if you know what I mean. One's own little nest. Oh, you'll have me tiddly, you know. Oh, nonsense. Mind you, there's rather a nice claret ahead. We don't want to spoil our palates. No. Uh, I say, I hope you're hungry. Quite famishard, actually. Good, because Mrs Trotter really is a very good cook. Was I boringly early, or is everyone else boringly late? Uh, well, there isn't uh, anyone else. I thought just a little intimate. Oh, no, Charles, I couldn't possibly. But you did say you'd oh, like to... I had no idea. Well, you asked me to a dinner party in an hotel. I couldn't possibly dine with you alone. It would cause an absolute scandalare. It simply isn't done in Basil's regiment. Oh, oh, my dearest Belinda, you are teasing me, aren't you? You know, it's awfully unkind to be such a tease. No, Charles, I'm not really. Really, I'm not. Oh, but no one will ever know, Belinda. Just one evening. It's all ready, and even cuckoos have to eat. Please, don't touch me, Charles. I never took you for a... for a cat. If Basil knew, he would shoot you. Shoot me? He shot a man in Durban for less. He, he, he shot him? You mean he killed him? He only grazed his finger, actually. But that was because the man moved. I see. Do please forgive me, Belinda. Silly mistake on my part. Yes, Charles, it was rather. You'd like to go home? Yes, I would. My carriage wasn't ordered until 10.30. Then you'll stay. I knew you would. No, I won't. 
Then I'll find you a cab. Oh, I couldn't go in a hackney cab. Not at night. I'm sure Basil wouldn't mind just this once. Top the water up under me cloud pudding, would you, Mrs. Wilkin? What the hell are you doing down here? Sorry you couldn't stay longer. Now you're sure you wouldn't like me to see you home? No, I think I'll be quite safe by myself. Just this once. Well, good night, Belinda. I hope we see each other again soon. So do I. Good night, Charles. Next time we'll have a proper party. Good night, Charles. Good night. Not even get her to the post. Well, I'll be damned. Saved our bet that time, didn't we, Fred? Stood up good and proper, was you? Well, I never did. Stupid woman. Typical stuffy middle-class army. Cut and run when she become aware of your dishonourable intentions, eh? Poor old Casino. I didn't so much as lay a finger on her. Oh, but you was going to, wasn't you? No garlic. Well, thank heavens there's some honest, decent women left in the world what's prepared to be faithful to their husbands and behave themselves. Thank you, Louisa, for those comforting and consoling words. <laughs> I don't think it's very funny. No, it isn't. It's rather sad, really. And I do want to apologise after all the trouble you've taken. I really am most awfully sorry. Don't worry. Here, forget about the ladies for one night, eh? Sit down, enjoy my nice dinner. Just like you to take it on the chin without moaning. Thanks. Louisa, will you dine with me? Me? Yes. Do me the honour of dining with me. No, Charlie, not possible. Got another 50 pies to come out of the oven. Oh, Mrs Wilkin can take them and out of the oven for heaven's sake. i got all the stuff to prepare for Lady Manton's dinner party tomorrow night. That's tomorrow night, not tonight. Well, relax. Enjoy yourself tonight. Take a night off. Well, no one's worked harder or deserves it more. I eat my own poison. Well, that'd be a laugh. It'd give me great pleasure if you would. And I do need cheering up. Well, I don't know. In fact, I'd say it was your duty to cheer me up. Well, aren't I more important than Lady Manson? All right, then, Mr Misery. Yeah, everything's just about ready. I suppose I'll manage. Thank you, Mr. Tyrrell. I shall be pleased to accept your kind invitation to dinner. Just give me a moment, I'll tart myself up. Uh, Merriman. Uh, yes, sir. Put two bottles of the Klikova and Rosé 93 on ice, would you? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, that's nice, Mary. I always did my mother's hair. She was proud of it. She said it was the only beautiful thing she had left in the world. What about her daughter? Oh, go on, man. Yeah. Right. Oh, here we are. So, wish I had a nice tiny waist like yours, Mum. Can't be more than 18 inches. Oh, that comes of not eating, Mary. Nothing but tea and toast for so long. Yeah, I ain't worn this, not since... Well, not since we come here. Wouldn't the gold necklace be nice, Summer? No, it's the jet tonight. It's got to be. Why is that? Well brought up, ladies, maids. Don't ask that sort of question, Mary. Now, uh, Mr. Tyrrell gave me that. Long time ago. How's that, then? Oh, you look beautiful, ma'am. You look like a real duchess. You do, really. Oh, blam, I'm glad I'm not one. What a life. Nothing to do all day except eat too much, sleep too much, talk too much. Oh, it's all nice fun when it's make-believe. <laughs> Pink champagne's pushing the boat out of beer, isn't it? Well, it's a special occasion. I didn't even know we had any in the cellar. Uh, but Merriman and I knew, didn't we, Merriman? Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, here's to a first-rate second-hand evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we try this woman's cooking? What would you say to your lady? She was sitting there. Well, with the first course, start off with the weather. The weather? <laughs> you can tell Mrs. Welkin this toast is like a soggy mattress. Uh, yes, ma'am. 
The weather don't sound too romantic to me. Oh, well, it's, it's a way of sort of breaking the ice, you know? How the fog stopped the pheasants flying, well, it meant more. Well, that's if she's interested in shooting. Well, you lady like shooting, you want to watch out. Oh, well, perhaps if she likes hunting, we might consider together how many days the beaver has been stopped by frost this season. Then go over every yard of that splendid hunt we had with the Warwickshire last November, never missing a fence. Then we could consider the merits of the big bay gelding. What well, if she likes tiddlywinks? Then we shall play at tiddlywinks later. Just now it is essential to return to the weather. Why? Because, just as I am suggesting that we should go skating together on the serpentine, a thought strikes me. Is the lady cold? Well, I've immediately all attention and apprehension. I must find out. Is her tiny hand frozen? Yes, yeah, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> By the time I'd finished with her, she looked like a real duchess. She did, really. How do you know what a duchess looks like? Have you ever seen one? Oh, not really. Only in pictures. Well, she's acting like one, and that's a fact. Soggy toast, indeed. What does she expect, leaving me to cook the old dinner single-handed at the last minute? I bet you there'll be a moan about the quail pudding next. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, now, the time is ripe to embark upon more serious subjects. Such important matters as where the lady is staying for us. Oh, that's easy. Windsor Castle, if the Queen will wear it. Louisa, I said serious. Like what horribleino play she's been to, and what DV house parties, <laughs> and where she dinarried before dancing with that divine partnerino. <laughs> and who's been popping into bed with who, no doubt? Put rather crudely, yes. Well, if you will excuse our Amy. What do you think your lady would say to that? She would be enchanted. She'd say it seems a shame to eat it. They always do. She'd say that she'd heard this Mrs Trotter was not only the best cook in London, but a most beautiful woman to boot. And, of course, I'd have to explain that Mrs Trotter was, in reality, a nasty old dragon with a face like the back end of a horse bus. Yeah, you better watch it, Mr Tyrrell. You're going to clear in a lug hole. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jinx up there, Mr. Merriman. Hi, uh, Jinx, it is, uh, no mistake. A bit perky, uh, Mrs. Trotter. Hey, Fred. But oh, Flo, such a change, you know. When she left the village, she was shy. But the last and the lack. She's come back with a naughty little twinkle in her eye. <laughs> oh, it's you and me for the oars, boy. <laughs> oh, my God. I think it's about time your lady went back to her pots and pans. No, not quite. Not till I've told her that her hair is like the finest gossamer seen at dewy dawn, her eyes like twin pools of rare delight. Her cheeks like blushing clouds. <laughs> what about Hampstead's? Huh? Ah, a, a, a ring of pearls culled from an eastern crown. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Where was I? Cheeks like blushing clouds. Oh, yes. Um, lips like two rosebuds newly oped in June. Neck like a column of alabaster. Yeah, I think that's about far enough, isn't it? Yes. Then I tell her that I love her. And your magic spell always works, eh? No. It's rather like hooking a salmon. That's the real sport of the thing. It's just a sport, is it? I suppose it is. Usually. And you always win in the end. No. Sometimes the lady says her carriage is waiting. She can whistle for them as far as I'm concerned. It's not my job. Eh? Hey. Well, there's pears there. Hey, not too ripe. It's the best they had left in the market. After 11, she gets me down a note. 
would I go and do the marketing for Lady Manton's in her place? Oh, it's not right, Mr Merriman. I can't do everything in this hotel. Uh, we can only any of us do our best, Mrs Wakelin, I suspect. Oh, yes. But I never come back here to be put upon. Do our best. I reckon the best thing I can do is tell Mrs Trotter to find somebody else to do her cooking. Mm. Oh. You want to watch it, Mr Merriman? Hey? Eh? Proper tantrum she's in this morning. I said to her, quite civil, your mail, Mrs Trotter, I said. She bit me head off. Why isn't it on my desk, she said. And why are there dirty paw marks all over this floor? This is meant to be a hotel, she says, not a bleeding dog's home. She's got out of bed the wrong side, and that's a fact. Uh, not her own bed, either. Is that what you think, Mr Merriman? Uh, it's not what I think. Oh, hold me, Joe, it's he's still in bed. As I was making up his fire, he was telling me about how he fought the fierce pythons of the northwest frontier of India. Patans. Huh? Patans. Oh, yes, that's right. He said if they didn't have us to fight, they'd fight each other for the fun of it. Just like the Welsh. Mr Merriman, he'd like some biscuits and a glass of light port at eleven. Mm. And the loan of your sporting paper, Mr Stye, if you'd be so obliging. At all. That's all. But I don't know how I'm ever going to get his room done at this rate. to lunch with me. How can I? I'm supposed to be running an hotel, not waltzing around the West End with you. Here you tea, ma'am. Thank you, Merriman. Do you want a cup? Uh, no, thank you. This pair's not right. Uh, no, ma'am. Well, take it away, then. Yes, ma'am. Don't bring the unripe pears in future. Uh, no, ma'am. Oh, Charlie, what have we gone and done? What people say, what they think. No one will know. Well, of course they'll know the servants will find out and everyone will know. But well, does it matter? Have you heard that Mrs Trotter at the Bentic tucks up with her customers? I want to drink, that's my trouble. You mean the whole thing was just to cheer me up? No, I don't mean that, of course I don't. You know very well I don't. No, your magic spell wouldn't have worked unless I wanted it to. I just feel in me bones it's dangerous. We can't go back now. No, but we can take a pull. A real pull. Stop? Yeah. Is that what you really want? Well, of course it's not what I want. Can't always have what you want in life, can you? Hardly ever come to that. I don't know. I just don't know. Look, I've got all the accounts to do. Got that dinner party for 24 tonight. looking up, Mrs. Trotter. Sorry we're late. We was uh, held up in the fog. Dinner go all right? Yeah, I think they was highly delighted. Good night, then. I'll turn the lights out. Good night, madam.
morning, General. Good morning. 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 Good morning, sir. It was something for Fred. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Topper. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. There's a message coming out of the kitchen from the German Embassy. Can you do dinner for 30 Thursday night? Oh, my God. I'll join you, Charlie. No, I can't, but Mrs. Welkin can. Yet she can do it. I don't stand here like death warmed up. What's the matter? Wasn't Mrs. Welkin the arse for mum? Well, I'm going to the theatre that night to see the country girl, so you can tell them the answer's no. Very good, mum. German embassy. It's nothing but little bleeding foreigners, anyhow. Chocolate cake, Fred. You look at that. That's your favourite. <laughs> well. That's a turn up for the book and no mistake. Thirty for Thursday? She's gone by me and no mistake. That's what she said. I suppose she's forgotten there's people staying in this hotel who have to be cooked for as well. Am all coming? Well, she's just gone by me, Mr. Merriman, that's a fact. I mean, there's nobody I've worked for who looked after her servants better than Mrs. Trotter did. Really thoughtful. Oh, granted, her temper's never been good. What's an argy bargy every so often? This spoony business? Uh. Oh, I don't know, I really don't. Oh, isn't it lovely? Oh, tar ever so much. <laughs> I'm going to wear this when we get a hair scot. That'll put them lady doodars' noses out of joint. Oh, it's only suckle long. I am your honey, honey suckle. You are my bee. A dee dad. Oh, Charlie, darling. <laughs> Oh, I feel tingly all over, like when I had measles, but nicer. I don't care about nothing. I don't care if it's Christmas or Easter. I must be going potty, I really must. Oh, it's nice, though. It's like being up in the air somewhere. Everything else is ever so small, except just us. Do you feel like that? Very happy. But not quite like that. Why don't you ever feel like that? You know, all sort of giddy. Yes, I have. A long time ago, when I was about 15. I developed an absolute passion for one of the girls who worked in the dairy at home on the farm. Oh, I was much too shy even to talk to her. I just gazed from afar in adoration. <laughs> <laughs> I soon grew out of it. Oh, I hope I don't grow out of it too quick. Here, Charlie. Come on, let's. What this time of day? Oh, what's the matter what time it is? But Mary had been later to turn up my bed. Oh, don't be so stuffy. Come on up to my room. Nobody turns down my bed. It's nice and warm and cosy up there. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Merriman. Yeah. This passion, Mrs. Trotter has. Yeah. It's changed her nature. Terrible she seems to have gone. Mm. Oh, flighty. I suppose it's marvellous for her being in love and all that. Maybe you're marvellous for her, but it's not at all marvellous for us, Mary. More like sitting on a powder cake for us. An explosion, is it, Mr. Merriman? Any second of the day. Order and sense out of the window. Confusion reigns. The country girl instead of the German embassy, if you get my drift. Not entirely, Mr. Merriman. Hmm? Uh, there was a chef in a hotel where I worked once. In a great touch with fish. Could make a common piece of egg taste like turbot. But when he had a passion on him, a bit of Spaniard he had one once a week, why then, I tell you the truth, he could make so taste worse than skate. That's what it can do to a normal, sane human being. If she's took bad, then. Uh, I had hoped to die peace from my bed. It'll be thankful release when it comes. But not in the ruins of the Bentic Hotel. You have a most powerful imagination, Mr. Merriman. Uh, lucky for some, but not for others. What you have in this world, you pay for. Good afternoon, sir. I'd like to see a room, please. Uh, yes, sir. Sitting room, bedroom, bathroom. Do you have such arrangements? Uh, yes, sir. Good. But I'm sorry, sir, I can't take on any new guests, not without the proprietor's permission. Well, may I see the proprietor, then? Mrs. Trotter's not here, I'm afraid, sir. When will she be back? I've no idea, sir. She didn't say. Uh, Major, excuse me, Mrs. Trotter didn't mention to you when she'd be back, did she? Uh, no. She's been out a lot lately. 
In fact, a great deal. Well, in the meantime, perhaps I could look at the rooms available. I have a cab waiting outside. Well, not without Mrs. Trotter being here. She's very particular, you see. What exactly do you mean to imply by that remark? Oh, nothing at all, sir. It's nothing personal. You'll bear me out there, won't you, Major? Uh, yes, Mrs. Trotter's uh, very particular. And where, by the way, sir, do you come into it? Oh, not at all, really. I'm just staying here, don't you know? Well, I'm delighted to hear that somebody is. I should be obliged if you would give Mrs. Trotter my card with my compliments and tell her that in future I shall not be bothering her anymore. There are plenty of hotels in London where they do have rooms. Yes, my lord. I'm exceedingly sorry, my lord. The sorrow is mutual. Good day. Do you think I did right, Major? Oh, sure you did, Star. Sure you did. Well, I hope so. Fred didn't wag his tail or anything. Still, Mrs. Trotter has a real weakness for lords. Yeah, but she does like to pick them herself. That's true. And I don't think this one was anything special in the way of lords. Still, what a way to run a hotel, eh, Major? Your papa was the best fag master I ever had at Eden. Always gave me a tip for everything I did. You know, a halfpenny or a sausage or something. Not like that fellow who messed with him, Duckworth. He was a real brute. If his eggs or his toast weren't done exactly right, he used to give me a terrible walloping. I hated that fellow's guts. I never thought I should ever feel sorry for him, but I did. He joined some smart cavalry regiment, treated his men just like he'd treated me at school. They wouldn't stand for it. They mutinied. Duckworth was court-martial. Last time I saw him, he was an old man of 45, drinking himself to death in boodles. Gone to pot. Rather like this place. What do you mean? Well, you're not well, implying that Louisa Trotter bullies the serf. Oh, Lord, no, she's the most charming woman. It's just, it's, uh, rather going to the dogs. You probably wouldn't notice, but uh, the servants chatter away to me. They, uh, pour out their troubles to the old Dutch uncle. It's very sad. They're not at all happy at present. In fact, I think Star and the Cook are thinking of leaving. I say, that... that is bad. I'd be sad to have to go myself. It's a, it's a great pity. Especially after all they tell me about Mrs. Trotter making such a great effort to, to get the hotel open in the first place. Yes, indeed. Hmm. Shall I? I don't suppose there's anything you and I can do about it. A nice drop of port, that. Yes, it's uh, Croft 72. Hmm? Brought up from home. Father's been forbidden to drink the stuff to his fury. How is he? Hmm. Not awfully good, actually. Huh? He had a very bad fall out hunting a couple of months ago. Hasn't got right. It's his back, really. None of the doctors seem to be able to do anything. He and my mama are just off to New York to see some quack over there. I was given a pipe of port by a very generous godfather as a christening present. Sad to say I never touched a drop of it. Oh, well, how is that? When I was 21 and the stuff was just ready to drink, I had to sell a lot to pay my debts. That well, probably saved me from getting chronic gout. Oh, well, I'd better turn in if I'm to look for another billet tomorrow. Good night, Jolly. Thanks for the port. Good night, sir. General and Mrs. Maxwell come in for a few days. I think I'll put them in uh, number five. So make sure it's all clean and ready. Yes, ma'am. Will it be requiring flowers in there? No flowers. He's only a general, not a pope. And Mr. Tyrrell's going away. I see, ma'am. Got to go off with his ma and pa to America. How long will he be gone for? No idea. Well, anyway, it'll give me the chance to give his room a real clean out. That's right. Boat 
back on an even keel now, Fred. Hey. Nice dog, that of yours. Yes, my sir. I had a dog very like yours myself once in India. Marvellous ratter. I bet Fred's a good dog with a rat. I dare say, Major. Nice sporting sort of dog. By the way, Star, there's a good thing going in the two o'clock at Plumpton. Near certainty. Nice price, too. Timberlino. Put a giddy on him for me, will you? Yes, my sir. The guinea, you said, Major? That's right. If you could advance me the money, I should be most grateful. Uh, of course, you get 50% of the winnings at 14 to 1. Very well, Major. Much obliged, sir. Is Mrs. Trotter alone? Uh, yes, sir, she is. Mm. Come on, Fred. Time you had your wash and brush up. Then maybe we'll have a look around for a rat. I can certainly smell one, quite clearly. I wonder if I might have a word with you, Mr. Trotter. Yeah, of course you can, Major. Come in. It's, it's a bit awkward. The fact is, I've a favour to ask of you. About money, is it? Uh, yes, it is, rather. Um, shortage, you say. A te temporary shortage, you say. You see, it's, it's been a bit difficult lately, trustees being a bit tiresome. Of course, it, it, won't, it won't be long now. It's just a question of getting things sorted out. Of course, I realise I, I can't go on staying here with my bill unpaid. Of course you can, Major. This old place is humming like a top. It's not going to ruin us. Wouldn't be the same without you. Oh, I said it's awful, awfully civil of you, ma'am. I really am. It's awfully grateful. Just yes, forget it. Take a pew. We'll have a glass of wine and drown our sorrows. Had any news of Charlie Terrell? Yeah, just had a postcard. Dreadful voyage, sick as cats all the way, and New York is cold as charity. Oh, Merriman, bottle of wine, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. And not that muck you bought up last time. Bottle of the Bollinger 93. Bollinger, yes. All right for you, Major. Uh, He's short of the tinkle. That's old Whiskers' trouble. How can you tell that, Mr. Starr? You always tell when they get specially friendly and confidential. Then borrow a guinea off you to put on a certainty. Mr. Starr says that Major Whiskers is short of money, Mr. Merriman. Can that be true? Uh, he's not paying for this wine, I can tell you that. She's paying for it. Drinking the profits. Yeah. But how can a gentleman not have any money? Well, it's not that he hasn't got any money, it's just that he hasn't got any available. He never will have any available. People like him never do and never will. Money just slips through their hands like a piece of wet soap, as you might say. Uh, couldn't happen to a servant, working man, as you might say. Only to a gentleman. Who is that? Oh, it's in the nature of things, Mary. If there's nothing you can do about it. Now, don't you listen to old gloom, Mary. People like the Major have their ups and downs, that's all. One day soon you'll find he'd be suddenly so flush he'd be taking a set of rooms just to himself. And buying a string of racehorses into the bargain. Hmm. Cool. Will this suit you, Sir George? Mm hmm. Yeah. Got a bathroom? Of course. Oh, good morning. Of course, you'll be gone by the time you come. Well, I should hope so. Got a room for my wife? Well, ain't that bed big enough, then? My dear good woman, no sensible man wants to spend all night in bed with a woman if he can afford not to. Well, there's this room over here. Hmm. Yeah. Is that'll do? How much do you charge? Uh, with breakfast, three guineas. Ruins. You people are all robbers. Does that include the sitting room as well? No, I'm sorry, Sir George. They're all took. Your tickets, my lord. Starts at a quarter to eight, madam. <clears throat> uh, champagne and 34s in your room at midnight, sir. 
General Clark's expecting you, my lord. Number five, up the stairs, second door on the left. Uh, Your carriage is waiting, Sir George. So damn well hope it is waiting, if it won't, I'd sack my coat from We're going to the opera. And we're late as usual. Good evening, sir. Star? Yes, sir. Oh, Baron, yes, sir, we're expecting you. Mr. Tyler, how about some more champagne? Oh, thank you, Senator. What the devil have you been doing, woman? I'm so sorry, George. Please don't be angry. Uh, if you could spare a moment, Baron, Mrs. Trotter would like to see you. No, of course. Who is that man? I've no idea. And why was he ogling you? Hmm? Some damn poodle faker. Come on. This is indeed a pleasure. It's nice to have you, Baron. How long will you be staying? Oh, a few days, perhaps a week. I've come over especially for important conferences with my tailor and my shirt maker. <laughs> senator, meet uh, this is Baron Paul. What's your name? Opitoff. Meet the Senator. Well, honor to make your acquaintance, Baron. Deeply honored. You know, you're the first genuine Baron I've ever had the honor to bump into. Well, ain't you going to offer the Baron a drink, Senator? Indeed I am. Must have a drink for my, uh, uh what you call it, Mrs. Trotter? Your cherry bum. Hey, <laughs> my cherry bum. He's ever such a nice boy, really. <laughs> the first American. Quelle chance. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Very pleased and honored to propose the toast to the Baron. <laughs> A real live genuine cherry bum for a real live genuine baron. <laughs> Skin off your nose. Oh, and off yours, Mrs. Trotter. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you will excuse me, Senator, if I drink to my own health. <laughs> Bought for number three. Uh. Whiskey after all that champagne. Uh. The American gentleman. Like many others I observed who have come from that country, appears to have hollow legs. What are they doing out there? They're uh, playing poker. And the American gentleman is using marked cards. Come on, Fred. Christen the lamppost one last time, then we'll shut up shop and go to bed. Raise your ten. Double. Oof. <laughs> I see you. Oh, you have a flush, is that right? No, no, Baron. That is called a full house. Queen's High. That's right, full house. Queen's High. You're too good for me, Senator. Ah, you'll get the knack in time, Baron. I'm quite astonished to find that you've never played poker before. Do you know that? Thank you. Will that be all, sir? That'll be all, thank you. Thank you. A few games of bazique and a hand of piquet with my old great aunt, the princess. That's about all the cards that were allowed in my family. <laughs> Help yourself, Senator. I'm not a real senator, you know, Baron. That's uh, just one of Mrs. Trotter's wry little jokes. My name is Crocker. Carlos C. Crocker. I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, Mr. Crocker. <laughs> Call me Carlos. Collis. I'm gratified. I'm just a country boy from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Made my pile can of beef. Chicago. CCC, the best beef there be. Hey, <laughs> expect your head of it. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, CCC, that's me. <laughs> Nothing wrong with money, eh, Baron? No, indeed. I'm glad to hear you say that. I wouldn't be here now without it. Yeah, only one thing wrong with my life. What's that? My wife. She's not here. God forbid. Oh, oh no. She's been took religious. She's in Des Moines. Yeah, she's took religious and she's took against drink. Nearly ruined my life. So I have to invent this trip to Europe just to save my sanity. <laughs> another drink. Why not? Only got another week. No time to waste, huh? <laughs> hey, if you won't think it rude my asking, Baron. What do you do? Do? Mm, for a living. A living? Oh, you mean how do I live? Well, I live uh, like 
like this, in a pleasant sort of way. No, no, I mean, what do you do for work? Work? Yeah, what work do you do? But I don't do any work. Well, none of your family do any work. Not that I've heard of, not for several hundred years, anyway. You see, my family have always had big estates in Bohemia and Thuringia. Money and commerce are never mentioned at home. Well, you must be rich. Not ever have to make money. Not even to talk about it. In fact, I can only think of one of my forebears who made money. My great-great-uncle Philippe. He did literally make money. Well, most people have to make money to live. <laughs> no, no, I mean, he actually manufactured money. <laughs> you mean he had a printing press? Huh? A mint of his own? I think it's a story better left hidden in the midst of time. Not a very creditable chapter in the history of my family. Huh? Look, man, I won't think no worse of you or your family for it. I've sailed pretty close to the wind once or twice myself. <laughs> <laughs> Toward the end of the 18th century, it became clear to my great-great-uncle Philippe that one of the foremen on his estates had sired a young man with a genius for invention. My great-great-uncle, being a philanthropic sort of man, sent the boy to study in Vienna, where he quickly astonished his professors. One of his inventions was a machine for reproducing paper money, a sort of magic box. Well, that's a useful kind of box. I wish people could still make toys like that. Anyway, it, uh, it probably wasn't quite as good as you said it was at the time. Oh, yes, it was. Well, you really know that for sure? Oh, yes, you see, the box still exists. Exists? You mean, uh, where? Under God, in a vault. Uh -huh. Somewhere on the continent. No, no, here in London, as a matter of fact. I always take it with me wherever I go. It is a promise I made to my father on his deathbed when he put it into my hands. Put it into your hands? It's not, uh... No, 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 no. Well, uh, <laughs> what's it like? A small wooden box, beautifully made. Typical 18th century craftsmanship. Boy, what I'd give just to see it. You couldn't, uh... No, no, of course not. What? Well, allow me the very special privilege of seeing it, huh? Just once. Well, perhaps sometime before I leave. Oh, well, that'll just about cap my trip to Europe. All right, if it would really amuse you so very much, I'll bring it here tomorrow. To this very room? For your eyes alone. Baron, I am deeply gratified. May I say touched by your confidence in me. Well, you have a singer for a neighbor. Yes. Hope she doesn't go on all night, huh? <laughs> I say, could I borrow back ten pounds? Surely. Let you have it back in the morning. <laughs> Good night, Collins. Good night, Baron.
cabs about anywhere, I'm afraid. So. If I don't get one, I shall be late for a most important engagement. Cabs are as difficult to find as honest horse dealers on wet days like this one. So. Oh, excuse me. Might I ask in which direction you're going? Several row, madam, but I have no conveyance. But I have my carriage. And I'm going to Bond Street. Would you think it very forward of me to offer you a lift in it? Indeed, I would not. <laughs> Good morning, Lady Adam. Good morning, Baron. You have met? Not exactly. Might I introduce you? Lady Adam is an angel sent straight from heaven, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, that's nice. She's about to save me from the ultimate disgrace, being late for an appointment with my tailor. <laughs> but, George, it was raining so hard. All I did was give the poor man a lift. Have you considered what people will say when we hear that the new young wife of Sir George Adam is in the habit of taking strange men round the West End of London in his carriage? I shall be the laughing stock of London. But it was quite a short way, and he was so grateful. Oh, yes, I'm sure he was, and so will all the gossips be grateful as well. You have no idea how to behave, madam, none at all. It's the way a woman of the tongue would act, a streetwalker, a whore. George, I won't be spoken to like that. You will. There. You're not the first bad-mannered filly I've broken in my time. You need teaching a lesson, and you shall be... Look, George, I'm sorry. Too late. Stop in this interval and send you home. But, George, my maid, I'm not undressed. Don't tell me you can't undress yourself. No. As promised. I must ask you to give me your word that everything you see or hear in this room within the next few minutes will go no further than these four walls. Surely I will. first notes the boy made with it. Hmm. Well, how many of these boxes did that young fellow uh, make? Only one. This is the only one in existence. Shortly after the boy made it, he met with a fatal accident, arranged, some say, by my great-great-uncle. You see, philanthropist as he was, he was also a very practical man, and he believed there are some people on this earth who are better dead than alive, for the safety of the rest of mankind. <laughs> I guess your uncle had his head screwed on the right way. Uh, I suppose it should really be in a scientific museum, but mm. I like to keep it a souvenir, a heirloom, a beautiful and amusing toy, if you like. If only it still worked. Oh, it's in perfect working order. It's not. Yes, it is. Of course, I never use it, except very occasionally to amuse my friends. You see, in the wrong hands, it could be rather a dangerous toy. Mm. That's why I make sure very few people even know of its existence. Mm, you're right there. Dead right. I, uh, I suppose I couldn't ask you to give me the very great privilege of a, uh, a demonstration. <laughs> why not? May I have the loan of the note you lent me last night for just a little longer? Surely. Here is your note. Hmm. And similar paper, you see. Hmm. I assure you, no harm will come to your money. <laughs> the secret of how it works died with its inventor, but the mechanism is activated by clockwork. Well, uh, how long does it take? Twelve hours. Twelve hours precisely. So. Now. We will leave it in peace. And I hope you will pay me another visit this evening. Surely. Oh. Yes, come in. 
Any boots for cleaning, sir? Oh, yes. I wanted to work with you, sir. Sure, the most delightful brocade I've found. Free waistcoat. Or oh, perhaps a dressing gown, huh? <laughs> oh, very tasteful, Baron, but uh, if you'll excuse me, I have to be off to a luncheon engagement. Oh, wait. Au revoir. <laughs> Till this evening. I don't know how I'll stick the waiting. <laughs> the Baron's boots, madam, and he asked me, confidential, if a way could be found for him to add possession of the key to the connecting door to the next room. I see. Well, why not let him have his bit of fun? He's a nice looking boy. Go. Go careful how he's done, eh? Of course, ma'am. Here, Star, how much? How much what, madam? How much grease did you put on your palm? Come on, I wasn't born yesterday. Eight quid for Lady Adam and Eve and kiss me quick, that's a bit cheap, isn't it? Yeah, here's your perks. And don't forget, no one else in this hotel goes about selling keys, only me. No, indeed, madam, not on no account. Right. Precisely 12 hours. You will lock the door, please. This part is rather complicated. Now, we wait 10 seconds. No, 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 don't, don't touch. I can't tell which is the false one. Neither of them is false. 
One is an exact copy of the other. No one could tell them apart. Oh, not even an expert? In the morning, you take them to a bank, or rather, two separate banks, of course. <laughs> of course. Ask the opinion of anyone in the bank. The teller, the cashier, anyone you like. But be careful. Never to let a living soul see you with those two notes together. No one in this country knows of the existence of this machine except you and me. Oh, I swear I won't. <laughs> Don't let anyone see you leaving my room, eh? Be on the safe side. Yes. Requested me to give you this, sir. Oh, uh, thank you, madam. Uh, will that be all, sir? That will be all, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, porridge and devilled kidneys for breakfast, as usual, sir. As usual, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. This was your room. Yes. I heard the noise of someone apparently in distress, and finding the door was open, I... Please accept my apologies. I'm sorry if I've disturbed you. Good evening. Oh, Baron! Wait! Please wait! What is it? Oh, my lady is unhappy. Yes. Warm yourself. Oh, thank you. Would you like some coffee and a sandwich? Oh, yes, please. I'm famished. Thank you. I say, what a nice room you've got. Yes. You do have a lot of pictures of animals, don't you? They're so much nicer than human beings. I mean, much more handsome, don't you agree? Most human beings. We have a picture of a bull at home. A prize bull. It must have weighed tons. It's got the biggest, biggest horns you've ever seen. Thank you. And sheep. Not looking like real sheep at all, but a lot of woolly haystacks. I say, what a funny bull. Oh, please, don't touch it. Why not? Well, it's rather delicate. You're just like my husband. He won't let me touch any of the china or anything at home in case I break it. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Haven't had any supper. No supper? But you could always ring the bell for a wait. Well, my door's locked. My husband locks me in my room at night. But... but why? He's angry with me. You see, ever since you've been in London, men keep looking at me. Well, I can't help it. You should take it as a compliment. Oh, I do, but my husband doesn't. He was furious with me because of you. Because of me? Because I took you in our carriage. Now, is that so very wrong? I thought perhaps it was with his permission. I shall, of course, explain everything in oh, the no, morning. Oh, no, no, don't. He wouldn't understand. You see, he thinks you're a poodle faker and he doesn't very much like foreigners. Oh, forgive me for saying that. It's not what I think. But I'm sorry to say that I'm finding my husband is rather a bad-tempered old man. My dear <laughs> poor lady, don't I, cry. Thank you. There. Yes. That's better. May I ask you a personal question? Yes. Why did you marry Sir George? Was it to escape from something else? Yes. How did you know that? Oh, most people marry to escape from something. Do they? Gracious, how sad. 
What were you trying to escape from? Oh, everything, I suppose. The life I was leading. You see, we live in the country, where George is the local bigwig. My father was a parson, but he died last year and left my sister, my mother and myself without hardly a penny. Poor as church mice. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mind so much being poor because I was used to it. But life at home was awful because my sister is a pig. Quite a nice looking pig, but a pig. And we used to quarrel all the time. Well, I was faced with having to become the companion of an awful old harridan when George saw me in church. He doesn't often go, so it must have been Easter or something. He kept staring at me from that great big family pew of his with all the coats of arms on it. He really looked like God. <laughs> then after church, he talked to my mother, saying how sorry he was that father had died and that sort of thing. Then he invited us for tea. And then the next Sunday, he asked me to marry him. And you said yes? Well, yes. He lived in a great house in a lovely park. And everybody said how rich he was. My poor mother was so pathetically pleased. Of course, I didn't know George then. But I don't think anybody does when they get married. Well, I have no idea. I'm not married myself. Oh. Well, I don't think they do. The whole thing's bound to be like a lottery. And you really married for your family's sake? Well, that was a kind thing to do. Well, not really. I married to spite my sister, if you really want to know, because she was so jealous. Wasn't that wicked? Yes. <laughs> Have some brandy. Oh, yes, please. Oh, no, I've eaten all your sandwiches. Oh, don't worry. I did have supper. May I give you some advice? Yes, please. Be very careful to behave absolutely correctly to your husband mm -hmm. and to everyone else in public, however boring it may be. And then you will be able to enjoy yourself more easily in private. You mean play possum? I've not heard the expression. We used to say it at school. Ah. Will you teach me? Teach you what? How to enjoy myself more easily in private. Well, we'll have to see. But not tonight. It's a miracle, Baron. A goddamn miracle. I went to the Bank of America, the First National Bank of Chicago, and both the chief cashiers say the notes are genuine. Of course. Hey, hey, that's mine. No, no, that one's yours. This one's mine. Ah, uh, but how do you know uh, which one is which? You said there was no difference. No, there was. Uh-huh. One of them was counterfeit, wasn't it? No, they were both exactly the same. Ah, uh, but, uh, tearing up money, that seems a real pity. Oh, well, I have to admit that sometimes even I am tempted. Well, uh, if you ever need money, I'll, uh, I'll buy that box off you. For cash, at a really handsome price. No, 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 no. No question of that. I don't want to sound too old-fashioned. It's... It's a question of honor. Family honor. Family honor, huh? Now, that's a damn tough thing for a man like me to understand. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something mighty powerful. I'm sorry, Collis. I have to get dressed. I have an appointment with my bootmaker. Sure, sure. Uh, perhaps a little uh, poker game later on? Why not? I've bought some cards. Oh, I don't know. Talk about throwing money away. Oh, I thought it was right to draw your attention to this incident, Mum. Yeah, you were quite right, Merriman. For a man who looks like a desiccated old bat, you've got remarkable sharp eyes. Yeah, thank you, Mum. As you were kind enough to observe, the good Lord has blessed me with a good pair of eyes, and eyes are to be used if you take my meaning, Come Mum. on out with it. Stop levering. I should like to draw your attention to another aspect of the gentleman in number three. What aspect? If you can spare me five minutes, Mum. Who 
got no right to go poking and prying about in the guest rooms. No, 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 ma'am. Of course not. It's just happened to observe oh, the gentleman. Who is it then? Peculiar looking thing. Uh, Bomb, is it? Uh, not that I know, ma'am. No, it's just that I happen to remember seeing a similar object many years ago uh, when I was working in the first class dining saloon on the passenger ship. It belonged to a gentleman, uh, he was also a foreign gentleman, ma'am, and another gentleman that appeared at the time had boarded off the first Merriman. gentleman. And, well, anyway, uh, when we reached the plate, uh, that's the river plate in South America, ma'am, uh, the police came on board and arrested the foreign gentleman. Crook, was he? Oh, yes, ma'am, so it appears at the time. He went to prison, certainly, and no doubt he'd never come out. Oh, them prisoners of South America, What was ma'am. his crime? Oh, well, at that time, no, we did find out exactly, ma'am. Uh, but the police came back and they examined every single piece of paper money there was on that ship. Well, you're a proper little old Sherlock Holmes, no mistake. Oh, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, if I might suggest you, ma'am, don't you think it might be advisable uh, to warn the American gentleman? Warn him? Warn him about what? Hey, well, uh, Look, well, Merriman, you're the waiter here, not the bloody manager. What people do or don't do in this hotel is their business, and mine. Eh? And I'm not the law, except when it comes to getting rid of me staff. Can I double? Oh, sure you can if you want to. Well, I'm probably wrong, but I'll double. I see you. Full house, King's High. You're sure getting a real knack for this game, Baron. Using your cards. Must be lucky. Your deal. Well, if you'll forgive me, Baron, I've got something more serious than cards to talk to you about. All the day, I, I haven't been able to get the thought of that box out of my mind. If you'll excuse me saying so, it's, it's far too valuable to be left lying around in hotel rooms where anyone could steal it. Oh, I'm sure no one except you or I would have the least idea what it was. Or, uh, or hidden away in some old vault where, where no one could ever see it. That box is of great historic and scientific interest. And I've got a proposition to put to you, Baron. Ever since I, uh, I set foot in Europe, I've, I've been deeply impressed by the, by the sense of history, the, the sense of tradition that I've found all around me. Well, uh, I guess we'd all like to leave a little bit of ourselves on this earth to be remembered by. Well, I am going to build a museum. The Carlos C. Crocker Museum of Science. But well, that's a noble idea. Bang in the middle of one of the greatest cities in the world, Chicago. People are going to come from all over the civilized world to see that museum, Baron, and shall I tell you why? They will make a pilgrimage to the Oppendorf room of my museum to see one of the great marvels of scientific history. That is, if you'll uh, let me have your box. It's a most generous offer, Collis, and don't think I don't appreciate it. It's just that well, I have to think of the promise I made to my father and the promise... The name made... of your family will be preserved and honored forevermore in the halls of fame, Baron. I'll give you $20,000 for it. In cash. 24000 Now, that is really being generous. He's set to get it all from the Marconi office before it closes. Yeah, well, you better run off then. Well. I'll keep an eye on it all. Lady, you called me? No. Yes. How can I help you? I'm cold and lonely. I see. Well, we'll have to do something about it. Won't we? Two, twenty-three, twenty-four. I hope I'm doing the right thing. Sure you are. Uh, have you uh, 
Have you got those instructions written out for you, me? But you won't be using it, so you won't need them. Uh, of course not, but it'll be more, uh, more interesting, uh, historically, uh, scientifically, if we have them framed by the exhibit itself. So it will. Mm. Thank you. <clears throat> and you'll want the key, won't you? Oh, hey, 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 I'd forgotten that. Well, yes, yes. Best be thorough. <laughs> Oh, when I uh, when I have the museum built, Baron, I'll uh, I'll have you come over and open it. I shall look forward to that greatly. You can always find me via the Ritz in Paris. Fine, fine. Whistle up your carriage, Lord. Yes. Good evening, Mrs. Strutt. Good evening, Baron. Off to the ball. Make an handsome couple, don't they? They say it's a real love match. I trust you're enjoying your stay in London? Oh, yes. Yes. Very much. Very much indeed. I'm sorry to say it's coming to an end. I should like my bill in the morning, please. Oh, I'm glad of that. Glad I'm not going to have to chuck you out. Oh, you British. I shall never understand you. Mm. Oh, Paul. Darling Paul. We've only got a few more hours left. Only think of the present. Never the future. But it's so difficult. I wish you'd found me before my husband did. So do I. Still, it's hardly likely that you would have stumbled across me in Buckinghamshire Vicarage. Paul! Why don't we run away together? Now, this minute! That wouldn't be fair on you. But I don't care. I go anywhere, do anything with you. I don't care what people say. I'd be yours if you want me. This is our secret love. Only you and I will ever know of it. It is our special treasure. We mustn't do anything that would destroy it. We must be very patient and very careful. Oh, you're so wise. But you will promise to come back and find me and take me off to St. Petersburg or Paris or Prague, wherever you're living. Where do you live, my lovely Paul? I live nowhere and everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> That'll do for me. Right at the moment, I live here. Yes. My heart. Can you feel it beating for you? Not look tonight. Ooh, George must have forgot. Oh, Paul. Darling Paul. We are tragic figures, you and I, locked in our secret heaven. This old brass bed, our magic carpet, and doomed to be parted at dawn forever. Make a lovely sad fairy story. You talk a lot of nonsense. <laughs> Something to tell our grandchildren. Oh, I think you've got the most beautiful eyes in the world.
scared him. You're up with the lark this morning. He wasn't there. Come and have a nice cup of tea. Mrs. Trotter, something terrible's happened. Oh, it's difficult for me to tell you, but I must tell someone. And as it's your hotel, well, really, you're the only person I can tell. So George been at you? No. Mrs. Trotter, my diamonds have been stolen. Oh, my God. And what's worse, I'm sure it was the Baron who stole them. Well, how can you be so sure? Because I saw him. Now, oh. please, please, don't call the police. No, I wasn't going to. If my husband discovers, well, he'll kill me. Look, the awful thing is that on the way home, we were meant to be putting them back in the bank. Does your maid know? No. But if she finds out, she'll tell. She's a sneaky old brute. Oh, you were the only person I could think of who could help me. Well, I don't know. Come on. What, me? Yeah. Well, can't I stay here? No, we might have to have a bit of a bash up with that bad old Baron. Ain't seen number three, have you? The Baron? No, ma'am. Not going out, is he? No, madam. Not leastways the front way. Right. Come on. Who's that for, Mr. Merriman? Uh, Sir George's breakfast. If you want to watch out, you don't have it chucked in your face. Well, uh, it won't be the first time. Gentlemen, with Sir George's temperament and nature, never easy to please. <laughs> yeah, but then there's a reward in it sometimes, yeah, when they smile. This is the drawer he took them from. There's the case still. <gasps> it must have been a nightmare. Huh? A nightmare? Did you mean I'm not surprised after all that caviar? Oh, yes, George, dear. And I couldn't sleep, so I went for a walk. Sensible girl. <laughs> ah, well, what's going on here? Eh? Regular hen's party. Your wife was just showing me her beautiful diamonds, Sir George. My beautiful diamonds, Mrs. Trotter. Well, I propose to you the signal honor of breaking my fast in here with your permission. Oh, I was proud of my wife last night, Mrs. Trotter. She not only engaged the favourable attention of the King of England, but she made all the other damn women look like a lot of selling platters. That's too much. No, it ain't. Not considering. Considering what? Considering you're not a baron, not no more than I am. Who are you, baron? A soldier of fortune fighting the good fight in a great battle of life. I'm not Daisy Adam. My father kept a livery stable in Hounslow. I grew up to prefer women and money to horses, so I went into service. We do have something in common, then. <laughs> I went to Amsterdam with a diplomat as his valet. Well, it didn't take long for me to realise how easily greedy men are parted from their money. And how irresistibly attractive I am to women. Not all women. <laughs> no. No, rich, lonely women whose husbands didn't care anymore or who were too concerned with their latest mistress. Sad women, mainly, who wanted a man. Women who, luckily for me, are stupidly careless where they put their jewellery. Ain't you getting a bit careless yourself? <laughs> Bored. I took risks for the fun of it. I came here for a uh, rest. I didn't intend to work. Well, who could resist Lady Adam? Or the Senator. Or our dear greedy old Senator. Twenty-four thousand dollars for a rotten old box. There's not much you don't seem to know. Well, when you're running a hotel, you want to know what's going on. We're two of a kind, really. Thanks for the compliment. It was your suggestion, wasn't it? Yeah, we give them what they want, we make them pay for it, but I do it straight and you cheat them. It's a bit different, you know. Not much. Well, what was in that box? Some simple clockwork, a couple of rollers and a tin tray, that's all. I've got a little joiner knocks them up for me quite cheap in Brussels. Do you know, I've sold five of those in a year. It makes a profitable sideline. Exactly. Men who are really greedy will buy anything. And when our friend the senator tried to cheat me at poker, I mean me, of all people, 
using marked cards. Well, I thought he needed teaching a lesson. Well, I must be off or I shall miss my boat. If I might pay my bill, please. What are you doing? Add in a note. 900 guineas. That is sheer blackmail. Oh, what a rude word to use to a lady. I'll take it in dollars if it's more convenient. Thanks. Goodbye, Mrs. Trotter. It's been a pleasure to have known you. Goodbye, Baron. Hope never to set eyes on you again. You won't. I never draw the same cover twice. Here, Baron. Why did you put them diamonds back? Well, because you'd gone soft on her ladyship, was it? They weren't diamonds at all. Paste. And not very good paste at that. Get his bedroom curtains washed. All right, Mary. Mary, come in here. Yes, ma'am. Sit down. What? I said sit down, cloth ears. I'm going to have a baby. Been round the doctors and nine weeks gone. Thing. Oh, don't look so bloody po-faced. Sure, even in Wales, people make mistakes sometimes. What are you going to do? Are you going round... I mean, there are no, women... No, I'm not. Having anyone do me in with dirty knitting needles. Anyway, I happen to believe if God makes a baby, has a reason to, and you have to lump it. Now, no one's to know about it except you and me. But Mr Tyrrell will have to know. No, he won't. And you won't tell no one. No, I won't. Do you swear on it? Cross my heart and hope to die. Well, it's no panic. Be all right for a bit. Then when it starts to show, I'll go away somewhere. Stop all with me outside cooking. And you'll have to run this place. But I couldn't, Mum. I never could. You will when I've finished with you. Now, the credit's bigger than the debit, so you subtract the debit, and that makes that 11 pounds, 3 shillings and 5 pence with farthings, right? Now, that's profit. That's not bad for one day. Now, I keep all the cash in here, locked up, always. And when there's enough, you take round the bank in St James Street. Well, what's enough? Oh, when it's nice and heavy, you have to use your savvy. Oh, I see. Right, next page. Now, tomorrow's Friday, so we have to pay all them bills. We'll make a list of them. Now, you want to answer all of that as the day they come. That way it's more polite, especially people inquiring about rooms and that. Have a look at them. How can I tell if they're the right sort of people, ma'am? Not being a snob like you. Oh, there's ways of telling. Now, here's one from a Mr Worthington Jones. He's not in Uzu, I've looked. Might be all right. On the other hand, he might not. He might have just tacked the Worthington onto the Jones for luck. But it's nice paper. It's handmade and it's white. Now, never trust coloured papers. And the address is printed proper. From a plate. You feel that. Now, that's engraved. Common people wouldn't know about that. I see. So you just write that to Mr Worthington Jones, thanking him for his esteemed inquiry, etc. Supposing when he comes here, I don't know if he's right or wrong. Oh, you can always ask Star or Merriman. They'll have quite a good idea. If you're really stuck, you can ask old Major Whiskers. He might not be here. Oh, he'll be here, all right. I reckon like the poor, he'll always be with us. Charlie! My dear fellow. How oh, splendid to see you again. Thank you. Ah, my goodness, how we've all missed you. Oh. Oh, the place seems buzzing. Oh, yes, going splendidly, full up with the most awfully good lot of people. I, I say, I was sorry to see about your father. Yes, uh, that's been pretty grim. In the end, quite frankly, it was a merciful release when he did die. Glass port? Well, if you'll forgive me, I've rather a lot to do. Hello, Merriman. You well? Uh, fairish, my lord. Uh, uh, Midland, you might say, in the circumstances, but uh, if I might be allowed to say so, my lord, it's as good as a tonic to have you back with us. Thank you. 
Uh, be a good fellow and bring a bottle of wine into Mrs. Uh, Trotter's room, will you? Uh, she's not there, my lord, oh, but then you know that. Well, no, I didn't. Been away on the sick list a goodish time, hasn't she, Merriman? Oh, fair bit of time now, my lord. Well, what's wrong with her? Oh, a bit off colour, out of sorts, gone away somewhere. Really? Very strange. I mean, who looks after the hotel? Uh, Miss Phillips is in charge since Mrs. Trotter left. Miss Phillips? Mm. Oh, well, thank you, Merriman. So you're Miss Phillips, are you, Mary? Oh, sir, my lord, we wasn't expecting you back, my lord. Your room's not ready. Ah, I was only passing through. Uh, what's all this about Mrs. Trotter? Well, she was took poorly with her nerves and all that, and the doctor said she had to go away and rest. But I had a letter from her just before I slept, Well, she didn't say anything about it. Well, um, she said to me she didn't want to worry you, you with troubles enough of your own. Where is she, Mary? I don't know, sir, not for sure. Somebody on the coast has been travelling about, you know. Mary, I want to know where she is. I swore I'd not say to anyone. I can't tell you. Now, huh? So it's a girl, is it? Kill that Mary. Not her fault. I found these. Oh, They're uh, rather out of date. How on earth did you find that about the baby? Worked it out. Oh. Well, it's three hours on the train down here from London. Plenty of time to think. You left the hotel just as things were beginning to get busy. Didn't sound like the Louisa Trotter I used to know. She wouldn't have left that place even if she was dying, unless she had something she had to hide from me, from everyone. I didn't take Sherlock Holmes to guess what it was. I ain't been too clever, have I? They all know. No, no one else. Was it bad? Well, it was a bit rough being the first. Why, Louisa? Why didn't you tell me? Well, it's none of your business, is it? My mess. I've got to clear it up. God, you are pig-headed sometimes. None of my business. How dare you? Oh, for heaven's sake, it's not your fault. Well, men are born to chase after women, aren't they? Otherwise, there'd be no human race. And women have got to watch out or they cop it. Oh, I broke my own rules. I knew what I was doing. It's a nice little baby. It's nice and healthy. No trouble. Not like a mother. You really thought you'd get away with it? Oh, I nearly did. Another week, clean and clever. Not very clever. What were you going to do with her? Well, I hadn't worked it out, not exactly, but she'd be looked after proper. She won't lack for nothing. Except a mother and a father. Didn't need to say that. I think I did. Louisa, I want you to marry me. Oh, you're a real gentleman, Charlie. I'll say that for you. You don't have to do the honourable thing, not this time. I love you, you silly woman. Yeah, but would you have asked me to marry if it hadn't been for the baby? I don't know. Quite frankly, I don't know. It's not a very fair question. That's the greatest compliment I'm likely to be paid in my little life. And I do appreciate it, honest, but... But you don't love me. No, it's not that. It's... Well, I'm just not cut out to be a wife. Anyone's wife. I mean, look at that baby. It's a nice enough little baby. But I don't love it. I mean, it could be anyone's as far as I'm concerned. I don't know why I'm just made like that. I wouldn't be no good as Lady Hazelmere. I'm best left as Louisa Trotter, eh? Best be honest about things, eh? Not to pull the wool. Only leads to trouble later on. Yes. 
It was a wonderful thing what we ate. I shall never forget it ever. But it's over. So, best to frame it, eh? Then we'll always have it to look back on. Things is bad. Well, you're bound to feel a bit low after the baby. Perhaps you'll change your mind. Oh, I ain't been too bad. Quiet, this place gets me down. It's like a cemetery with seagulls. All I want to do is get back to noisy old London and my hotel. Louisa, would you mind if I took charge of the baby? Well, one of the grooms and his wife at home in the country have just lost their child. They're an awfully nice couple. I think oh, they'd be very... Yeah, that, that's a good idea. May I go and take a look at her? Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Speaking of Fred this morning, though, yeah. got him all dolled up, ready to greet Mrs. Trotter, and what does he do but Miss Parade? Some lady friend down St. James's Square. I bet Fred's the devil with the ladies. By the way, Major, Mrs. Trotter sends her compliments and would be obliged if you call on her in her room. That's your convenience. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Poor old Major Whiskers. Can't help feeling sorry for him. He hasn't had a bad run for no money. When I saw your bill was still unpaid, Major, I couldn't hardly believe me eyes. I, I really am most dreadfully sorry. I, I, I thought I'd best wait till you got back to explain. You can't live on tick all your life, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm expecting a draft any day now. I tell you what, I'll go down to the bank again this morning. Come off it, Major. Any draft you get goes straight on the ponies. Now, this hotel ain't run as a charitable institution, not no more. You've all been so jolly kind to me here. Rather dug in now. Huh? I just wish I could think of a way of, of paying you back. I can think of one, Major. Good afternoon, my lord. Lady. Major? Ah. Ah, uh, Henry! Hello, Barty, old boy. Haven't seen you for years. Anthea, how splendid to see you again. Hope you're both well. Follow me, if you will. Put up here before? No. Had to close up the house in Belgrave Square. Too big. First class place. Uh, wonderful cooking. Splendid. I hear there's a fine lot of partridges about in Norfolk this season. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hello, sir. My lord. Hello, Fred. I see we're celebrating Mrs. Trotter's return. Yes, my lord. We're all highly delighted at her recovery. And so am I. Oh, Merriman, a bottle of wine in Mrs. Trotter's room, if you please. You're very good, my lord. Charlie. You've come back, then? Well, I'm glad. But of course I have. This is my home.